Hey, Karen Julia here. So one of the questions I get asked a lot is about the process that I have for putting my photo books together. So I thought since I was just about to start designing um, David and Katie's book from their wedding in October this year, I thought I'd just share that with you and talk you through the kind of overall approach and everything. So with these photo books, if you see my other videos on YouTube, you'll know that they don't lay flat. So they're like a kind of, um, more of a kind of coffee table book where the the spine is bound like an actual kind of um, more of a book than an album. So what that means is that the design options that are available are a little bit different. So for example, I wouldn't have typically have kind of two photos touching like this because we do lose a bit of information in the center. So I tend to go more for um, like a kind of full frame type photo like this so that the information that's lost isn't going to include any of the photos. Also, um, there's 200 pages in this book. Now, David and Katie have chosen 232 photos, so what that means is that we'll be combining a few shots. Now, I tend to find that the kind of getting ready photos in the morning and the some of the kind of documentary coverage photos, they're ones that tend to um, fit quite well to have multiple photos on a page and then be having other um, photos like portraits and group shots like that uh, to have an individual photo on a page instead so with this I think I'm going to just tweak the order here for the the dresses hanging up and have this as one of the multiple pages in this shot of the ceremony I took that earlier in the day but I think it would actually fit better um, potentially um, a little bit closer to when the ceremony took place. So sometimes I will adjust the order a little bit if I think it kind of fits the narrative a little bit better. On the day, I typically arrive at venues er much earlier than I need to be there, just to allow for traffic and things. But then once I'm there, I'll tend to just grab a coffee and start shooting. So what that does mean is that often I've got details that, like the, the ceremony room here where... It, it was really a couple of hours later that there were there were photos in that kind of space. Um, but we had the kind of morning ones as well. So I think sometimes it's, it's worth just adjusting those if it fits in overall uh, with the feel. Now, th this is one a set of photos where we could get away with losing a bit of information in the middle. But I still think it can just be a little bit neater to have that kind of that clear border, really. The light in the bridal prep space at Simmonsbury Hall was, was really gorgeous, actually. It was really nice soft light in there. And these are two photos where I think it might be more impactful if they reach the edge of the page. So we're going to scroll right to the end here and make these a little bit bigger. So I'm going to add a little border. And then I don't know if you've been to Samelsbury Samuels Hall before. I can't even pronounce it. But they have a playground area. And <laughs> we thought it would be kind of fun to do some group photos there in the morning with um, David and the, the groomsmen. So I was a little bit worried about the suits on this like rope bridge, um, but everything held out okay and there was no no dramas or anything. So. so that was good. I did have a sewing kit with me in the car though, which I, I do have a, a kit of um, a different kind of accessories and things in my car just for, just in case of situations like that. So that usually includes like, you know, plasters, blister plasters, sewing kit. Um, general first aid stuff. Oh, also cur curling tongs, because there's nothing worse than having that type of fine rain that just totally demolishes curls. So I do have curling tongs and straighteners as well in the essential first aid kit that I have. <laughs> in fact, there's probably not that much in the first aid kit, if I'm honest. It is, it is mainly taken up by the um, the, the hair. <laughs> 
styling <laughs> accessories. So like this is one where they're not really going to fit on a separate page um, because this is like a one of the bridal prep shots and I quite like having the different sections on different pages. I just think it's a bit neater. So for this, I think what I'll probably do is... And this is the thing, it seems quite quick initially, but then when you start making changes to things, that's when it kind of takes a bit longer. So I think I will move this over to the middle here. And then make this one a, a combination... Like that, because I think that photo is better, bigger. And then I will take this out. So it just keeps these like in the same kind of spread, if that makes sense. And the light in the, the space for the bridal preparations was was really nice and soft. It was also perfect for, for shooting Katie's kind of makeup shots. If I can just find the right layout that I want. And I think I might go with a square one for this actually, the one on the right, because we've got just the back of the bridesmaid here. So, where are we? There we go. And just little subtle changes like that because I think just add a light, nice little bit of variation because we are kind of a little bit restricted just because of the, the way the book is designed really. And this was just like a little candid moment of um, Katie putting her perfume on. With it being an October wedding and quite a kind of low winter light, it meant that we got this kind of bright sunlight shining through the blinds, which I thought was really nice. And then for these photos, really I kind of want these all to be, you know, each having their own individual spread. I think these might be quite nice um, square. You don't fill in the frame a little bit more.
So I'm now at 63 spreads. I just paused the video because I thought you um, probably don't want to watch me individually adding um, a whole ton of photos, but just to kind of flick back through over what was previously added. So with the couple portraits, they've all got um, one page each just to keep things really kind of, um, you know, make sure they've kind of got enough space. Um, so I only tend to combine like the, you know, maybe documentary recovery shots or... Uh, some of the dance floor ones from later in the day um, tend to lend themselves quite well to being kind of combined on a page and a bit of a montage. So I have for a couple of them just varied instead of having this kind of full frame, just went for square instead. Um, and just to kind of show you with the portraits were always tend to be sort of fairly limited on time. Time tends to be fairly tight for doing couple portraits. And the thing is, couples don't want to be spending ages um, having photos anyway. You know, you want to be able to sort of enjoy being your guests and everything. So with these photos here, you'll see that we've kind of got this background and then we move over to the house, which is really only a few steps away, but it looks completely different. And I've just framed this um, backdrop here with the side of the, the hall, which I think has just got such a kind of unique look to it. So I wanted to kind of get that in the shot. But it's a case of kind of getting as many different backgrounds and variations without having to move too much. And then we walked around to the other side of the house. We've got like a completely different um, look with some kind of natural walking shots framed with the rose garden there. And then we walked around to the pond and <laughs> it was just time for the um, <laughs> these these ducks. And then back around to the front of the house, which is a completely different look from the shots that we were doing when we were closer to, I keep calling it the house, it's a hall, isn't it? Sorry, don't tell Samesbury Hall um, that I've been calling it a house. Um, so, so yeah, so it's kind of getting as much variation within the shortest space of time as possible. And this is one of the reasons I really love having a venue visit because it means that all this can be kind of planned in advance. So all of these different variations of shots took, uh, just looking at the X of data uh, from the start there was about 19 minutes which is a little bit longer than we usually have but I think we had a fairly leisurely stroll around the the hall so so that was quite nice and then so table details I think it could be quite nice to have com kind of combined on a page and then more of a kind of full page again for the individual room setups and now if there is a little bit of time before the couple are announced into the room I do like to try and get photos around tables earlier on when the tables are all nice and neat and tidy. Nobody spilt wine anywhere. <laughs> Not that that ever happens, of course. Um, and then we've got a couple kind of getting announced into the room. And then here when we see we've kind of got like a venue shot and a couple of the interior shots, I'd probably just switch the order of that just a, a little bit. The light does change through this, but I think having the venue, having like these both on a page in terms of the actual narrative I think the the interior shots would be kind of nice together so I think what I'll do is maybe move this to be combined here this is just like another little detail shot of the um hang on recording the screen at the same time as designing this album is um putting my mac under a little bit of little bit of pressure 32 gig of ram still but you know um so yeah with these i'll probably make this a, a bigger version and then combine these these other two on the same page Okay, we finally got the Mac to change that spread round. I think I'll just click save on this. Yeah. Now I think this would be quite nice with the guests instead. 
So I'm going to have this as a spread of both of the, the hall photos here. I'll just take this out of here for a second. Okay, it's not liking me recording at the same time as doing anything else, really. <laughs> I think I'll be pop popping it on pause again. So for the guest photos, I think these are the sort of things that do look really nice in a montage. So maybe something like four on a page or even eight can work quite well. Um, so I do like combining these. Uh, Okay, we've tried the whole switch it off and switch it back on again, and that seems to have um, cleared the problem, I think. So with these, I'm just having a kind of four on a page, like a nice little montage, and I'll see how many we get to, uh, how maybe I might compress things more once I see where we're at at the 200 page mark. So, let's see. And then we kind of get into speeches and things. And really with speeches, I think it would be really nice to have these big on a page and have them spread out so that we can really see people's expressions. Now, I, my aim with first speeches is to kind of get the expressions of guests on the top table and shoot the room as well. But often it depends how much room and space there is and where I can shoot from. And also, I suppose, like the height and things like that available. Um, sometimes depending on how tightly packed the room is it's not very easy to move around so I'm kind of safer being at the side at the front for example um, or quite low down at the front which means I'm not always able to really see the expressions at the back of the room very well I mean I can have a longer lens but it, often my view can be blocked so if there's a bit more space between the tables that does make it easier to kind of be able to capture both at the same time so that's my main aim but I tend to just kind of really be influenced by the available space really now this room was really quite packed, but I have um, got some guest expression shots in there. I was able to kind of squeeze between tables, uh, between the the different species and things, and I tend to not, I not I don't want to move around much when um, anyone's actually speaking. Although the um, Father Rubride speech was quite long, so I, I did move about a little bit more, to, kind of further on in that once the kind of key parts of that were done, really. Um, so I'm do making all of these full frames so that we can kind of see the full image. I don't really want to crop anything off at all. And I have made quite a few of these black and white. The lighting was really quite mixed at the top table. Um, it was like it was different colour at the top table than it was in the rest of the room, which kind of gave a bit of an unusual look, really. And then we had the the kind of the, the, star, the star cloth, um, which I think really kind of lifts the back of the top table. I think it was really lovely. Uh, but I think black and white in that room at night works really nicely as well so I've, I've have got a bit of a combination of those and here where we've got three and I'd, I would like to start their portraits on like a separate spread I don't want to be mixing them together so I'll combine these ones so I think this one would be nice um, where David and Katie are having a moment there I think that would be nice like as a kind of one of the larger ones and then combine these two Now this one was on the left here was just a test shot so that wasn't really supposed to make the final cut but um, I think I showed it to them in the day and they liked it and when I looked at it afterwards I kind of quite like their expressions and stuff so we just went with that so but the intention was that that was just I was just checking the the exposure I wasn't actually like we hadn't even lit the sparklers by then um, that's how I hadn't even included their feet because <laughs> it was just supposed to be a test. So this is where the sparklers lit. You can see I've backlit this, so my flash is quite a distance behind them. And I tend to put it a bit further back because then it lights the grass up as well. And it's just a bit more dramatic with the smoke and things. And then with the um, bridesmaids in groomsmen shots with the flash being further back and the the way that the 
the backlighting has created the shadows. I, I love the kind of the kind of quite dramatic effect of the green in the grass. It just kind of gives a real nice punch of colour that you wouldn't like really expect at that time of night, really. Um, although the smoke on this one was a bit crazy. Uh, I think this was like, th th there was one that I had where their faces weren't covered with smoke and it was that one. So I'm just so glad that nobody was blinking. So we're at 81 spreads. We've got 50, 40 photos left. Can't do maths. Um, so there's probably going to be some montage kind of combinations going on. So I think with with this, I'm going to combine these four on a page. This was Katie and David having a bit of a practice at the first dance before the room was open to all the evening reception guests. So I think with the cake cutting photo, I think we'll make that larger actually. And really, I think this needs to be on the spread. So I think we'll make the practice dance one a little bit larger. And with the first dance ones, especially the ones of the couple, I really want them to be kind of one on a page so that they're um, just it feels like they should be a bit larger, really. So we'll, when we, we come to, we'll do some montages shortly. Those ones will be more the, the dancing ones that feature the guests in them. And with these, I don't really want to crop any of these as square because we've got guests all around the dance floor. So I don't want to cut out anyone. Um, it's really nice to be able to see people's facial expressions when they're watching the couple dancing. Now I changed the te flash technique that I was using. So I'm going to make sure that the photos are on like a different page, if that makes sense. So um, this one technique's kind of all consistent. And then I changed to like a kind of shutter drag effect. So I'd like those photos on the same page so that you, you just get like a different vibe. Um, and I, I just think it, it's separating them like that. It's the same with the group shots earlier where uh, I think there's se certain sections that kind of go well together. Now this doesn't really fit, but we've got some kind of a little bit of a random combination of photos at the end here. So I think what I'll do is make this one bigger and just have the three and move this one over to be like um, one of the outside photos. And sometimes I will do that, you know, just shuffle them around a little bit just to kind of fit the narrative a bit better. I think these two were guests. I think we'll have these two group shots together on one spread. I 
And then it'd be nice to just have this as the end of the night photo, I think. Although I did finish off with David on the dance floor, so. So I think we'll go with that. So that's 94 spreads. So what I would then do in that situation, because we can have 100, is go back to some of the ones that I've combined them a little bit and spread them out a bit more. So for example, this one here, um, I think that these group shots could maybe be a little bit bigger. So what I would do is have these two in a page. And then with this, I can make the, the group photo here um, Make that the larger one. We'll split these out so they're a bit, bit bigger. The details on this table were amazing. It had um, kind of like autumn leaves, um, the pine cones and things like that. It's a real warm kind of autumn feel. So 96 spreads, so I'm just going to separate these ones out as well. So we've got an extra three spreads. So if there's any other photos combined, I'll be able to spread those out a bit more. So I think with these ones of the girls, that's what I'm going to do. And put these on different spreads here. So we've got an extra two spreads available. So I'm looking for a couple more photos that I can maybe spread out a little bit more.
that just makes this one a bit bigger. So I think we'll um, have a bigger spread of David and Katie dancing there. And then make this one a four on a page. Okay, so we're at our 100 spreads and this is now ready to get ordered. So I've designed the cover for this already. So I can now drop in all these spreads and um, get this all uploaded. So if you have any questions about this, feel free to reach out through the website or drop me an email just hello at karenjuliaphotography.com and I'd love to answer any questions you have or you can just comment below the video awesome all right thanks a lot <laughs>